There's one. Around the same spot. Come here, Mr. Ned Riggin Bass. That was pretty cool on that little rocky point, little shallow rocky point. We don't have much wind right now. And something like a little simple Ned Rig can generate bites. You can tell by his lips. I'm not gonna try to hide it. It's pretty cold water. The water's in the 50s. It's warming up. Um, Mid-March, I'm sitting in 16 feet, throwing in the oh, three or four. A lot of times those bass will lay up on those little shallow rocky places. You may be able to pick off one or two with the crankbait. Follow back up with the Ned Rig, it is an excellent, excellent one-two punch to kind of clean up the fish that are laying on those places that are just not quite active enough to, uh, to run down something, you know, like a hard bait. The Ned Rig came from an individual named Ned Cady from out Midwest area. It has evolved a little bit from his original. Just basically, it is a small lead head, open hook, and most times, most people fish a stick worm type presentation on it. For me, I like to start with a four inch one and then kind of cut it down. If it's a really heavily pressured deal and you know, really clear water, I'm gonna cut it down to two, maybe two and a half inches. Or if it's dirty water, kind of like what we have here, I'm gonna keep it at least three, uh, maybe even three and a half inches. So just take off about that much because I want a decent sized profile. I don't want a little bitty tiny bait out there in this uh, off colored water for those fish to find. And green pumpkin, it's rarely wrong. Um, it, may, it may not always be the best, but it's rarely wrong. So just thread it up on that on that head, those little lead barbs, and you're good to go. That sproat style hook, shape of that head, it comes through those rocks surprisingly well to be an open hook like that. Typical cast for me you know I, i'm i'm going to generally sit deeper than where i'm where i'm casting um, but i'm gonna throw out immediately let it fall slack line all the way to the bottom and then i'm just going to kind of start lift and drop you know drag it along the bottom some but a lot of times i like to lift that bait up off the bottom and then let it fall back down i think if you imagine that bait just laying on the bottom that a fish that's in that area he may not know that it's there but then when you pull that bait up that fish is going to see it actually there's one now That was very much what happened there. I had picked that bait up, kind of set it back down. Oh, that's a, that's a nice fish there. I picked it up, set that bait back down, and as it was falling, that fish got a hold of it. Come here, buddy. 10 pound braid and a eight pound leader. I don't have to worry about it too much. Yeah, that's a nice, nice Ned rig, rigging fish. I had let that bait go to the bottom, drug it a little bit, kind of popped it. As it was sinking, that fish locked onto it. That is a lot of fun, man. I've been throwing crankbaits and other stuff today and catching fish, but not near the numbers that I'm getting right now, so. General rule of thumb, the way it is with anything, the deeper you're fishing, the heavier head you're gonna use. But I, I pretty much always land on the side of trying to use as light a weight as I possibly can. You know, all the way down to that 16th ounce, and then it steps up to eighth, three sixteenths, quarter, a head shape helps with that a little bit too. That kind of pointed end on this head, it really seems to kick it around and keep that hook out of those rocks. That's the great thing with a jig worm setup like that where you've got an open hook. Are you gonna wanna throw this in a brush pile? Absolutely not. But what you can do, you can fish it in a lot of grassy situations, use a little bit heavier head than what the depth of water calls for. Then you can let that bait get some grass on it, snap it clean, and as that bait's falling, that's when you're gonna generate a lot of bites. So. Always keep that in mind. I'm always looking for a way to power fish anything I'm fishing with, even something like a Ned Rig. The great thing with the Ned Rig is it doesn't matter if you're a novice, if you're a brand new guy to it, it's super simple. Or if you're you know, a professional angler, a Ned Rig will catch bass for anybody out there. Such a simple deal. Pretty much you put that thing in the water, you're gonna get some bites on it. Look at that, got it gone. He got it and got gone with it. So that's what that gap in that hook, when those fish suck that bait in, it doesn't have to come all the way out to the edge of their lip to actually get the hook in them. You'll get the hook in them back there, back in their mouth, I mean in the roof. They just, you pin them like that 
and anybody's gonna land that fish, no doubt about it. Slide it right back out of there. All is well. Adios, little buddy. Thanks for playing my game. Sometimes there'll be a little wad of them on that point.